Good morning, church. It's lovely to see everybody this morning. Um, So, um, (laughs) not sure what that was. Um, Yeah, just, um, uh, we we had an Alpha Holy Spirit Day um, yesterday. And um, yeah, God really showed up. And um, it was such a a great day and it really blessed us. And um, yeah, I just think about how we draw near to God and worship um, this morning. And um, yeah, I just I just want to um, pray for everybody, whether they're online watching or whether they're in this building. So let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can come together, that we can worship you as one body. Lord, and we offer up to you our worship as a living sacrifice. And Lord, we come before you this morning and we lay down anything that is distracting us or um, any heaviness that's, uh, that we've, we've, <laughs> we're walking in at the moment, Lord. And we just place all of that at the foot of the cross. And we say, come, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I was reading um, this <clears throat> psalm, Psalm 122, and um, I looked at it in the message version, and I really like it in the message version. It says, when they said, let's go to the house of God, my heart leapt for joy. And now we're here, O Jerusalem, inside Jerusalem's walls. Jerusalem, well-built city, built as a place for worship. The city to which the tribes ascend, all God's tribes go up to worship, to give thanks to the name of God. So let's stand, if we're able, and let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Hearts and stuff, the wheels will 
conquered the grave. Thank you that we have a living Savior, Lord. And we can come to you and we can lean on you and you will shadow us under your wings. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Rebecca, please do take a seat. Good morning. Um, I'm Rebecca. I lead our children, youth and families ministries here at uh, St. Peter's. Um, And children, I'm just going to give you a little warning. You all listening. We're going to do our kids song in a minute and I need lots of people to help with the actions. Okay, so have a little think in the next minute while I'm talking if you'd like to come and help. Okay. Just a couple of things for you this morning. Um, We started doing this last week, but you'll have noticed, hopefully, that we've got this beautiful artwork around this side of the room that our children's groups, along with Sherry, um, helped to create over the summer holidays. And we thought they were so lovely that you might like a set of them for yourself. So we've created a set of, um, like, greetings, blank greetings cards. We're selling them for £10 a pack. You get a one of each design in there. Um, They're going to be on sale on a table just in the foyer outside here. So if you'd like a set of those for yourselves, then you can have one of those this morning. They're £10. We can do cash or card payments. Um, We have already sold over half of what we ordered. So if they run out, pop your name down and we can get some more ordered. Um, And the money that we raised from those is going to go back into another children's project. And the other thing, just to save the date quickly, the 9th of December, we are going to be doing a family Chris Dingle service that we're really excited about. So if you've got children or grandchildren um, and you're looking for something to take them to over Christmas, 9th of December, 6 till 7, come and join us. It'll be really fun, um, but a great way to kickstart Christmas. So have I got any children ready to come and do some actions? This is where they all spring up. Come on, let's go. Well done, guys.
Oh, it's my favourite. I love that one. Oh, a lovely, lovely bit of uh, Jesus lifted high. Brilliant. You'll see this morning that there is a new minister's uniform in the church. <laughs> As uh, anyone who wants to be a minister here has to get, get themselves one of these. Oh, there you go. Not really. It's good to see you all, uh, and a few notices for us uh, this morning. Have you done the uh, Christmas stocking appeal and got your socks and got them in the bin downstairs or made a donation? Brilliant. Your last day is today if you're going to do that. Do get them in. Uh, There's still time. I don't want to promote shopping on a Sunday, but uh, you could still get yourself out and uh, and make that happen. Uh, How are we doing, Rose? Have we done all right? Great. Good to hear. Lovely. Uh, hello. <laughs> I did Sorry, ask him to do you. that, but it surprised me when he did. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about something that's happening at Christmas. So, um, I haven't just got a pay for the sake of it. Over Christmas, um, we want to be able to bless each other, and not everybody over Christmas does get the opportunity to spend that with somebody normally. So, we want to make sure that we're all able to bless each other. So... This is the option for Christmas Day hosting. So I have sent out an email as well, but I just want to kind of mention this at the front this morning. So we really think that people who are in a position to host can be blessed by those who might be in a position to want to be hosted. So if you feel like you're either in a position that you could really bless somebody on this Christmas Day with your company then come and see me directly or send me an email. Or if you, you feel like you want to be in a position to bless somebody else and be blessed by them at the same time to host them, then, again, come and see me or send me an email. So that would be fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you for that. I think it's a really important thing that we do, that we look after one another uh, at Christmas time. And if, there's, if that's on your heart, let's, uh, let's get involved and make sure that nobody uh, is un- on their own unnecessarily. A couple of other things coming up in the life of the church. We have a church meeting uh, coming up on the 29th, Wednesday the 29th, 7.30 here for members. Please do get yourselves down here and and make sure that we're gathered and discerning the mind of Christ together and looking to him for all that he might be asking us to do as a church. We've just had a prayer day. We might feed some of the stuff back from that as well as our leaders day that we've just had uh, and uh, just see what God is saying and doing and leading. He's been so faithful and good to us. Uh, let's continue to press into that. So if you're a member, please make sure you're here on that night, if at all possible. We've also got a foundations course coming up for those who are considering uh, baptism and membership. Uh, If that's you, if you think, yeah, I really want to make this my spiritual home, I'd love to be a member here and commit that a little bit more. Uh, If God has been leading you in your faith journey and you feel that baptism is the right next step, do have a word with me after the service uh, and we can talk about that and it would be great to welcome you onto that that course on the f- Tuesday the 5th of December. Okay, well we are going to uh, focus this morning on front lines. You'll have seen the front lines uh, uh, slides up already as we've been singing. This is a series that we looked at 18 months ago in April and May uh, 2022 and something that is really important uh, in our lives as Christians. Now, One of the things that we did around that time and have, have done a number of times is a thing called This Time Tomorrow where we ask somebody to come and talk about their front lines and what they've been doing on it. And this morning it's my pleasure to be able to welcome um, Emma uh, Raggett to come and share her story. So Emma, come and join me. Great to have you with us this morning, Emma, and uh, thank you for being willing to do this. Will you just introduce yourself a little bit to, uh, to the church? Uh, I expect there's a number of people who know you, maybe some who don't know you so well, so just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, well, I'm Emma. <laughs> so a little bit about me, I'm a mom of two girls, a wife. I work for the Priory Adult Care with people with mental health and learning disabilities. Um, back in May this year, Let's just say I came in for coffee and cake, and I came out with a Christian faith. Wow. There's, <laughs> there's um, more to it than that, but I'll save that for my testimony. Um, so my journey is just starting. I'm currently doing Alpha, which I'm loving, and I don't want it to end. 
even though I'm so new to my faith and I definitely can't answer a lot of people's questions, but I can speak my truth and what I feel in my heart, it makes me naturally want to tell people. So, Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's, it's, it's so important and it's, it's great, isn't it? When we see new Christians come to faith and they've got that, I've got something new and I want to tell people about it. And that's been what you've been doing, isn't it? So tell us a little bit about your front lines. Tell us where you will be sort of this time tomorrow or in the days ahead and what you've been doing uh, in that place. So like since obviously finding my faith and... Um, I've just naturally like been telling people, it just comes up in conversation, like, oh, what are you doing Sunday? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. And um, so with friends, family, work colleagues, even to school moms on the school run, because when they're saying, oh, what are you doing and stuff, um, by talking about my faith in journey, I've had work colleagues come to church with me and a work colleague, Maria, she's just, um, the, obviously Maria and Eden, have always, like, you've, you've been Christians for, like, way, you know, ages, but unfortunately their church closed, didn't it, in lockdown? And then by me just saying, oh, by the way, I go to church on a Sunday, Maria was like, where'd you go? And I was like, oh, Worcester. She was like, have they got a Sunday school? I was like, yeah. And she was like, I think you've just answered all my prayers. Um, and then she's here, and then we were jumping around at work, weren't we, Maria? Praising God. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the um, our service users were looking at us like we were crazy. Um, so yeah, um, by chatting like again to work colleagues, I found out um, that one of our younger, uh, one of my younger colleagues, she was brought up with a faith, had a strong faith. When she was twelve, she went somewhere in Africa with her family to, you know help out and then they had a tragic loss and um, she came away because they were praying that you know this person would still be around but he was taken by us talking she's um, thinking about coming back and she's asking questions even saying by things like when I'm feeling nervous I've been telling her what's going on in my life she's like I'll pray for you so it's just yeah um, my sister came here when Olivia was dedicated and she was like, yeah, no way, I roll in. And then recently she came and spoke to you, didn't she, Mike? And, um, and she said on Wednesday, yeah, again to me and Maria, she was like, yeah, I'll come next Sunday. I can't this Sunday because I'm working. And yeah, um, and, yeah and also on um, Wednesday again, me and Maria were talking about like, I was like, well, I don't know how God wants to, like use me I don't I don't know and uh, then you you messaged me and I have been told before that about discipling and that's kind of what I'm doing I but I, I was like what no because it come it's so natural what I'm just telling people it's not I don't know yeah so um yeah and then me and Mike's mom were talking and then about like you messaging and then she was like like, we were just chatting, and I was like, oh, no. I, on Wednesday, me and Maria were like, God, how do you want to use me? And then, it, like, like, the light bulb went off, and I was like, oh, I'm discipling. Like, and I didn't even know, and it comes so natural. I don't have to yeah. force it or anything, yeah. you know. And it is. It's just by, like, saying, I don't go, oh, I'm a Christian. You know, just a, it's like, hi, how are you? Yeah, you all right? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing at the weekend? Oh, I'm just going here, you know. Um, and then it's like, also, also, I tell them, like, it's not easy either. Like, I've had wobbles and, you know, in Alpha, <laughs> it's quite emotional at times. And then, like, life stresses, you kind of sometimes, like, where is he? But I think, I, I know in my heart, he's there. And all I can know is what, what I feel. Um, and it's just because you're a Christian doesn't mean your life's going to be perfect, because it's yeah. not. No. And there's things we can't explain, so, Yeah. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> I mean, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's, yeah. isn't that great? <laughs> we, I think we find it so easy to overcomplicate it or end up with fears because of situations where we've done that and maybe it hasn't quite worked the way we want. But the way that you've just, just described it, being so natural, just yeah. what you want to do because it's on your heart and yeah. it's, who, it's what you're doing and who you are, that's just fantastic. 
how can we pray for you? Just pray for more of those opportunities? And yeah, and like, obviously, sometimes, like, the stresses of life can get in the way. And, you know, sometimes I don't necessarily go to God first and help, like, ask him for help and stuff. Just, like, pray for me to, like, you know... <laughs> you know, go to him and surrender to him and then, like, yeah, and just continue in what I'm doing, you know. Um, it comes so natural. I don't know. I don't... I, I feel like I've done nothing, so... <laughs> I don't you're, know. You're just living the life, and yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. So, so well done, and thank you for encouraging us with that this morning. Let's, let's pray for, for Emma and her fruitfulness uh, on her front line. Yeah, Father God, we thank you for Emma. Thank you for her willingness to to speak for you and to bring you and to, to live you into various contexts in which she's in, in her, her family and friends, on the school gate, in her workplace. Thank you that she's just living authentically as a disciple for you in those ways. And Lord, may her story inspire us. And we pray that you bless her, give her uh, more opportunity to speak for you, more uh, chance to, to let people know about your love and goodness. And when you watch over her and lead her as she continues through Alpha, uh, and uh, continues to, to walk your ways. Lord, will you just draw her more and more into yourself uh, and uh, allow her to shine for you. Uh, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Bless you, Anna. Thank you so much. We're going to continue to pray. Yeah, let's give Emma a round of applause. Thank you for encouraging us. Uh, Alison, will you come and lead us in prayer, please? Thank you. That was just fabulous, Emma. Really good. It builds faith for us all, doesn't it? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, for those that don't know you, my name's Alison Boardman, and I'm a church leader here. That doesn't make me anything special. It just means I have more work to do. Um, for those of you who are aware, uh, we had a prayer day on Friday, and the... Um, subject was to help one another go deeper with God. Um, and I was thinking that one of the ways that we could do this, not necessarily that I got this from the prayer day, but it was to recommend to one another Christian books, biblically based, that we could read or listen to, to build our faith in Jesus. I'm all ears for a recommendation at the moment, but I in turn recommend this book to you. It's not just for the pioneers. It's called The Church of Tomorrow by John McGinley. And it's not just for the pioneers amongst us, but everyone, because it reminds us of a lot of essential truths, which for me just made me keep saying yes and amen all the way through the book. So uh, now to prayer, uh, if you, in case you've forgotten why I'm here. <laughs> In the chapter on prioritizing prayer, uh, McGinley speaks of praying from the throne, declaring the truth of God and releasing his breath, blessing and power, and praying to the throne, where he emphasizes praying from our heart. So we're going to try a bit of that today. Let's talk about praying from the heart, because we don't talk about that much. Maybe we can learn something here together. This might be especially encouraging for those who feel they don't always have the right words to pray. You know, you don't have to have eloquent words to pray. You just need to have the Holy Spirit within you and your heart towards him. And in case you're feeling nervous, let me put you at your ease. I'm not going the direction of praying in tongues or in words we don't understand. Whereas that is valid and very useful way of praying when we don't have words. But that might be for another day. In Romans, uh, Paul says, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times, we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. God, the searcher of our heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit 
because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. Well, that's very reassuring, at least for me, I hope for you too. So other than emotional sighs or groans even, we can also visualize our prayers. Um, Catherine Coleman, um, an American healing evangelist, that might discount her on three counts for you, but anyway, she's a well-known Christian healer, and she is uh, quoted to have said once, young man, faith is when you quit believing what you see and you start seeing what you believe. I thought that was quite good. So in theme with Andy's message today, we're going to pray for our front lines along those lines. Now, our front lines, in case you don't know, are those people around us who don't know Jesus like we do. People we're connected to. It might be our friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, etc. So I just want you to spend a minute and bring to mind just one person on your front line the one that's perhaps uppermost on your heart right now. And we're going to start with me leading you in prayer from the throne, and then I'll help you to pray to the throne from your heart and with the Spirit for that person. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, all-powerful one, you made us every single one of us, and created us in your image. We praise you for your perfect ways. Jesus himself prayed for all who will believe because of the witness of those who already believe. And we are those who already believe in you. We are your witnesses. We know we are called to witness to others of your love for us. Give us courage and your love for others to do just that. We believe in you by faith in you, which is a gift from you. We pray for that gift of faith from you for the one we have on our heart right now. You so love everyone you have made, Father God that you gave your only son, Jesus, to suffer and die, so that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. We pray for eternal life for our friend or family member. Thank you, loving God, that you are not willing for any to perish, but all to come to a knowledge of you. Such understanding is too wonderful for us to understand, but your Spirit searches out the heart of a man, and you will not let him go. Let your spirit go to this person on our hearts right now and bring their heart to you. Fill them with the knowledge of you and their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, having laid a foundation of faith prayers using some scriptural truths, we're going to pray with our heart and the Holy Spirit. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to visualize your friend or family member, the one that you've decided on. Visualize them as they are saved, not in the moment they're saved, but how they are in living their lives and their demeanor and their ways as one who knows Jesus and whose hope is in him. Perhaps visualize them praying, reading the scriptures, perhaps even doing that with you. Visualize them in freedom from the pain of their hurts and sorrows. Imagine them in great joy for their salvation. Imagine them telling others about Jesus. Pray into those pictures. You don't need words, but if words help you, use them. Just journey around these pictures in your mind. I'll give you a few minutes here to visualize and pray, and then maybe you can practice this in the week and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. You might find that for some people, the pictures are stronger than other times for others, so pray into these more. And I'll stop speaking now for a few minutes. 
and you can have a go. Lord, because of your great love, hear our prayers for those we love. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I just feel like God is saying, pray the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> so let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you you never let go. And Lord, I just pray as Andy comes to share this morning what you've laid on his heart, that you would give us open ears and, and soften hearts, that we would hear and we would receive, Lord, and that we would feel encouraged In Jesus' name, amen. Please. Over a month, around 6% of the UK gather together to worship Jesus. It feels like we're too few to make a difference. But the reality is, Monday to Saturday, God has us. Scattered in the world, connecting to hundreds and thousands of people. So wherever you are, Whoever you are. Whatever you do. You can make all the difference in the world. And on Sundays, when we gather together, we strengthen and empower one another to be sent out again. 
for life on our front lines. So 18 months ago, we had uh, Ken Benjamin here uh, from uh, LICC, London Institute of Contemporary Christianity, uh, and he talked to us and started a series for us in looking at our front lines, those places where we go, where we connect with uh, people who don't yet have faith. And we went through a series and considered how important, how central this is to everything that we do as Christians, going out and speaking into people's lives, living lives that reflect the glory of God. And we need to do this because we have a problem. As we've just seen in that video, there is a problem. In only one month, 6% of the population of the UK go to church. That's not every Sunday. That's 6% over a month. We've heard in the recent uh, census that's come out the fact that uh, the number of people who call themselves Christians is now not in the majority. 98% of people don't go to church every week. We are in a minority. Things have changed uh, over the last uh, 60, 70 years or so. And we're in a different place. And there is a problem that we are to address. It's a problem that God is going to address through us. And we have the privilege, but also the responsibility of joining in with him and his plans. We said as our church vision that uh, we're going to go out and we're going to love our communities. We're going to use the gifts that God has given us and resourced us with. Uh, and we're going to invite people to connect, to encounter Jesus, the living God. And we've said that we're going to do this through a couple of different ways. We're going to do this through missional communities, which we've been building this year, doing some work and developing those. Uh, and we've seen some fruit uh, from those. We've heard uh, the coffee shop re re uh, referred to already this morning. Uh, and CYF work is doing some amazing things. And we're beginning to build two others as well. And we've said we will do missional communities. But we also need to understand our responsibilities and what the impact that we can have for God on our front lines in those places we go as church scattered. It's great to come together on a Sunday and in our small groups and other times when we gather and be together and encourage one another. But the reality is we don't spend that much time doing that. And through the week, there are so many opportunities we have to share the gospel. So what are these front lines? Well, they can be all sorts of different places. The, the fundamental thing is there are, they are places where we connect with people without faith. And that can be our workplaces, it can be our families, it can be our friendship networks, where we do our hobbies, it could be the school gate, it could be so many different places. And the reality is we will have many, many, personally, uh, and across the, the spectrum of the church, there will probably be thousands of places where we connect and have front lines but it's important to identify them. Now, LICC give us some helpful tools here to understand the problem, and they're all around red dots. Uh, we've placed some red dots on a map identifying our front lines, and the map is over here. This is what we did 18 months ago. Uh, we've got some new people in the life of the church and probably got some new front lines anyway, so there's an opportunity later to go and place your, your red dot where it is and, and, uh, and maybe just step back and pray for that a little bit later on. But these red dots are helpful because they show us what we're like when we come together as church, gathered together in the corner. Uh, if we just have that box up, there we go. Uh, and we, we gather and we, we, we spend time together. But we need to go out. And so we go out and we mingle with all the others and the result is we can turn the world pink. Now I thought, I never thought I would say I wanted to do that. But over the last seven years, I've recognized that that's just going to be an inevitability anyway uh, in our house. Um, and, uh, but actually, we can turn the world pink. We can have influence on those around us who are yet to have faith. And we can do it just as Emma was describing in really authentic, natural ways, but speak of Jesus and make a real impact 
for the kingdom. We need to recognize we spend most of our time uh, in those places. We spend far more time in those places than we ever will gathered together as church. That's how we live. How are we going to have an impact? How can we have a day-to-day impact for Christ in this way? How can we go and shine our light and let the whole world see that we're living for the glory of the risen King, as we've already sung this morning, uh, and, and be like you know, Philippians 2, where it sh- says we could go and shine like stars. We're to go into those places, and we are to turn the world pink. It's so important that we don't gray out, lose our distinctiveness, or become the same as the surrounding culture uh, that is so pervasive. You know, our surrounding culture is so strong. It speaks into our lives in so many ways. Uh, And social media and things like that, I was just discussing with Zart before the service, how that can have an effect on leading our, our lives and our culture as Christians. And yet we need to be distinctive. We need to recognize that we can make all the difference in the world as we go out and choose to live for him. And here are some scriptures that this series was very much sort of built upon. Uh, And this is Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 from the message. Let me read it to you. Uh, It's so well put by Peterson. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life your sleeping, eating, going to work, and and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it even without thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Again, just think of Emma. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best in you, develops well-formed maturity in you. This is how he wants us to live. And I think stories uh, and how people are doing this is so important for us to hear. We've heard one already this morning and we're going to hear another one now. I'd like to invite Hannah Kent just to come up and and share with us what she's been doing recently on her front line and how she has had an impact for the kingdom of God. So uh, Hannah, come and and let us know what's been going on for you. Thank you. Um, So recently I've been chatting with one of my friends at school quite a bit about Christianity and my faith. Um, She's had a bit of a rough time um, like in terms of family life recently and um, she lost a family member and while she was visiting this family member before they passed away she went to the chapel at the hospital and sat there and she was an atheist like she'd never never really thought about Christianity before and while she was there she just felt this like kind of presence and she felt that someone was with her but the chapel was deserted so she messaged me about this because like, I'm open about my faith at school, and and she was just, like, asking me questions about it, and I was like, well, I personally think that's probably the Holy Spirit, and so she kind of thought about it a bit, we discussed it at school, and then the next week she was like, oh, I went to church on Sunday, and so <laughs> we've, we've discussed that a bit, she's been back a few times, and then I think it was last week, she was like, oh, I'm going to go and buy a Bible, and I was like, I hadn't realized she was taking it this like, I thought it was like, oh, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to see what happens. But I hadn't realized that she'd actually got that far into it. So she, she, she went and bought a Bible. She was asking me what, what was best to start with in terms of reading. Um, she's had lots of questions because she's quite, like, scientific and mathematical. So, obviously, creation, she's like, how does that work with the science? And we're still discussing that. And yeah. But it's just, I'm just trying to support her the best that I can and, you mm-hmm. know. So you say that you're open so people know that you're, you're a Christian. In what ways do you do, you do that? You know, how, how do you let it be known that, you know, that faith is important to you? Um, I mean, a lot of people at school are quite atheist. Um, there's quite a few <laughs> discussions I have to listen to that are very anti-Christian. Mm. Um, and I think I just, 
I just try and show God's love. Um, I do tell people that I'm Christian and like I share things that the church has posted on my social media so people do see things like that as well. Sure. Fantastic. Thank you for coming and sharing. I've, I've just dragged you away from, um, from the group that you're helping to, to lead this morning. So I really appreciate that. We have a round of applause for, for Hannah. Uh, so thank you for that. So that we can see, you know, we can have such an impact by just allowing it be known that we have faith. You know, we're Christians. We, we love God. We care about uh, him and we want to live our lives for him. Uh, and so letting others know that we, we've got the best good news is, is so important, isn't it? And Hannah and Emma have been doing that. And uh, we all need to, to live our lives in those kinds of a way. Uh, and uh, we can have uh, a real impact and make all the difference in the world. I think it's really important that we recognize that this isn't just for evangelists, not just for a little group of people who can go off and do this, but this is for everyone, for all of us. We can all be drawn into this. We all have front lines. And this is one of the key elements of the teaching of this series, for us to recognize that we all have them and to identify them and to grow in confidence on them. And we need to recognize that our front lines is wh wherever we are. You know, we all have a front line, a place where we, we do life or work and encounter people um, who don't know Jesus. Uh, and uh, we, we know that we can bring God into those situations just by being ourselves in those places. And we should know that we're not on our own, but God is with us in those places. And he can have the impact through his spirit. He can shine through us if we will only let him. When we look at Psalm 139, verses uh, 7 through to, to 10, we know that he is with us. We can read, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make a bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. God is with us wherever we are and he has a commission on our lives to shine for him in the, all of those places and to live out what we believe authentically he comes with us by his spirit the holy spirit shining through us and it's in whatever we do you know maybe we think oh, i can't i can't speak for god in my workplace i can't do that maybe they won't let me i know for ruth in the school uh, it can be a challenge to express faith. There are limitations on what you can do there. Um, but there are ways to be with the staff and to know that you do. And that would be an example. We need to be able to go into all of our places where we, where we uh, work and where we, we live uh, and allow uh, God to, to shine through us. Whatever we do, whatever job you do, whatever you put your hands to, he is with us. The, the work of our hands, however small and insignificant it may seem, matters to God. It is part of our worship and how we serve others and bear witness to God. And there can be kingdom significance in our daily tasks and activities, no matter uh, how great or how small. And we're to do everything that we do in the name of Jesus. When we do something in the name of Jesus, we are acting as Jesus being his representative, being his ambassadors, ambassadors for Christ. That is who we are. We're not just uh, somebody in a place where we feel weak and, and wobbly. We are ambassadors for Christ. So I can parent my children or be a friend in the name of Jesus. I can price a job, if that's what you do, uh, and run a business in the name of Jesus. You can plumb a sink in, in the name of Jesus. You can coach a team, in the name of Jesus. You could bathe or help or care for a patient, in the name of Jesus, and be his ambassador, and allow the Holy Spirit to shine through you. You do it with all of your heart. And we can do it whoever we are, as I said, some may be called to be particular evangelists and have a real gift of communicating and leading people to faith. Uh, and we have some of those in the church, and that's great. 
but we can all shine. Whoever we are, however insignificant we feel, we can all identify those places where we go. And however we work in those places, God can use us, whoever we are. Whether you're young or old, whether you are uh, new to faith or been a, a, a Christian for years and are really mature in faith, God can use you. Our value, our worth, our significance, and our life on our front line flows from our identity in him. We are his ambassadors. We are children of God. We are powerful in his name. And that is each and every one of us. It's not about trying harder and working as hard as you can in these places. It's about learning to let God do it through you. Tuning into him, him empowering you. You then just being yourself and natural in that place. <coughs> Whoever you are, you can have a front line and be fruitful in that place. Now, it's been 18 months, as I said, since we looked at this, and I know a number of people have been working on their front lines and learning how to do this and spending more time focusing in this area uh, and trying to have an impact. It would be great uh, for us to encourage one another with stories. So what I'd love us to do is just have a little bit of a discussion time and share about those places. We're going to get together in uh, twos or threes, uh, maybe identify those places if you haven't yet, where your front line is, and then talk about how you can have an impact there. I'm going to ask a question, where are your front lines and are you being fruitful on them? And just regarding fruit, fruit can be hard to see. If we only see fruit as somebody coming to faith and us knowing about it, we will always be discouraged, I think, because we don't always know. But we can see fruit in lots of ways, people taking a step forward, people asking a question that you respond to, uh, an opportunity that you've had. Let's encourage each other with all of those little seeds that we've planted and the green shoots that we're seeing growing. And let's claim that as fruit and know that God is using us in those places. So let's get into groups, uh, two or three. Maybe we can put just a little bit of quiet music on in the background as we discuss. Uh, and we're just going to chat about this for the next uh, four or five minutes. Uh, let's encourage one another.
So we'll just uh, bring those conversations uh, yeah, in, just give you 20 seconds or so to land those. Great to hear you all talking uh, so much uh, about these and you know, it's just what it's all about really, isn't it? When we go out and where, where we're in those places, how can we be effective? And I'm sure that there are loads of stories amongst us of, of little seeds that we've sown or maybe some beautiful stories of people finding faith. Uh, that can really encourage us, and maybe we should share those more. If you've got one, um, a, a story that you feel you'd love to share, always come and have a chat with me. It would be great to get you up the front and share it with the church and build us up uh, and keep talking about these things. What is God doing? How is the Holy Spirit moving through us as a church family and bring those testimonies of God's power at work through us uh, front and central? We uh, had a leader's day a few days ago. We went away to Chapel House in Hallow uh, and we were considering discipleship. And one of the things that we were looking at is the journey people make to faith uh, from sort of no knowing nothing all the way through to making a decision for faith. And what are the steps that people have to go through uh, and how we are so intrinsically important to helping people walk through those steps uh, and, and find faith. And one of the things that we realized and we were talking about, and it's really on my heart that we, we do some work on, is, is learning how to not just be people who, you know, people without faith sort of connect with and, uh, and know. Like the, we have a lot of people who come into the building through the week, maybe four or five hundred people come through the building each week who don't have faith. Uh, and they're connecting with Christians. We want to move from them connecting with Christians to them encountering God. Uh, and being changed, don't we? That's, that's what we want to see. We want to see them encountering God and uh, his love for them being revealed to them. And we play this intrinsic role of helping those in this building and those on our front lines learn more about him. And I think what is a really key thing is having what I call in intentional conversations. You know, conversations with, a, with an aim that we land gently, but they are challenging. You know that Hannah and Emma have, have shown us examples of doing that. We've probably had lots of examples as we've discussed things now. But having those conversations that go that little bit further, just at the right time in the right way, that help people to take a step closer and reveal the love of God for them. And there are eight things that I want to suggest we need to do to make sure that we are having fruitful, intentional conversations. And the first of those is we need to desire them. And do we really want to have them? And, and I recognize, absolutely recognize, they're not necessarily the easiest things to do. There's a lot of fear of, you know, upsetting somebody. We know that, you know, talking about religion is, is one of those slightly taboo subjects in places, and we need to find the right time for them. But we need to desire them. Do we really genuinely want to do this? Uh, and uh, if we do, I believe God will really lead us into them. So we need to desire them. And then absolutely linked to desire is prayer. We need to pray uh, to have intentional conversations. Lord, give me the opportunity to speak for you. Open my eyes. Let me see what you are doing uh, and where I can have them. And I think heart's desire and prayer link absolutely <coughs> together. The more we pray, the more we will desire them. The more we desire them, the more we will pray. Uh, so let's be people who do that. Let's foster within us a real desire to be effective on our front lines. We need to prepare for them. There's the, uh, the saying, isn't there, that um, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Uh, and we know that God is going to use us and he'll work through us, uh, through his Holy Spirit. But what are our stories of grace? What are our stories of encountering God that are transformative to us? Why are we Christians? What is it about it? What is your particular story, your powerful story, that, or, or maybe story is? that you can speak into people's lives when they maybe ask the question, why is this important to you? What do you? Why do you go to church on a Sunday? When you get the opportunity, when the door opens, are you ready to walk through it? Maybe we should rehearse those a little bit. Just think through, maybe jot down on a piece of paper the particular encounters of Jesus that have transformed your life. You know, we've talked about the woman at the well being an amazing, beautiful story of how Jesus encounters this woman and blesses her, and her because her story is just so thrilling to her, she can't do anything but go and share it to her village. And it's transformative. We all have them. Let's think about our great stories and be willing to share them. We need to commit. We need to seize 
the day, the carpe diem, you know, seize the carp. Uh, we, we need to seize the carp, we need to seize the day. When the opportunity comes along, uh, we need to go for it. Uh, and it's a risk. And maybe it won't go quite right, but maybe it will just go beautifully. And you'll see a thrilling result of somebody saying, yeah, I'll come to church. And they come and they encounter God and they move forward and they're saved. Isn't it worth a risk? We need to commit. We need to be courageous. You know, take courage. God is with us. And he says it time and time again to the disciples. Take courage. Take courage. I'm with you. I'm here. Don't fear. I'm with you. I can help you. You will accomplish these things in my name. You're not flying solo. You've got the whole power of the Holy Spirit <coughs> behind you. Take courage. Be courageous. Take the step. Overcome fear. Be incarnational. Incarnational be, means being like Jesus, living like Jesus. Do it his way. Again, the woman at the well is a good, good story to think of. That kindness, that love, that timing, the amount of time that he had for her, answering her questions, but then speaking purposefully right into her context. This intention, that intentionality that he has, but with such gentleness and kindness and grace. Let's live like him. Let's do as he would do. Let's learn as we read uh, the Gospels and as we maybe read Acts and the response that they had to having been with Jesus. Let's be uh, like that, like him. Let's be incarnational. Let's be authentic. Be yourself. Don't exaggerate your story. Don't blow it up into something that doesn't, uh, doesn't come across as genuine or true. Just be you. And share very, very genuinely, and we've heard the word today, naturally, haven't we? Um, communicate in that way. Just be really authentic. You don't need to be, try and pretend to be the big evangelist. Just be you. Finally, be filled with the Spirit. Ask the Spirit of God to be upon you and strengthen you in those moments. Let's look for the opportunity for intentional conversations that go that bit further. Acts 4, 31 says this. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Let's ask for the Spirit of God to be upon us, to be filled, refilled, empowered, and go. And go and bring the love of God onto our front lines. And finally... Together, we will grow. Together, we grow. As we talk with each other, as we just have in that discussion time, as we encourage each other, as we are a little bit accountable to one another, this is what I'm doing. How would you go about this? Have a chat with somebody. I've got this person I want to speak to. You're really good at this. Why Speak into my situation. How would you go about it? Let's encourage each other. As we gather on Sundays, as we are resourced on Sundays, let's spur one another on to love and good deeds. Let's over come the challenges and let's move in this together as a church family you know we're flying solo often out in those places but when we come in here on Sunday we can build one another up and send each other out and encourage each other let us do that all together Hebrews 10 19 to 25 says this Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having uh, our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. We need to stay red. <coughs> let's not grey out. Let's stay red. Let's stay full of the Spirit. Let's stay encouraged. Keep gathering. Keep spurring one another on and move forward in this that we might reap a harvest. I'm convinced that God has this work for us to do. He tells us and commissions us to go and do it. 
and I'm sure that there are many front lines in which we can be really fruitful. Let us trust. Let us go for it. Let us be encouraged. And let us be in those places and see God work. And let's see the thrilling outcomes of that uh, as, we, as we gather and worship together. The prayer day uh, on Friday was great. A number of people came. And I think one of the things that came through that was about being courageous. Give us your courage, Lord. Give us your courage. Let us live for you. Lead us, Lord. Empower us, Lord, uh, that we might be fruitful. Let us, let us pray. Father God, we pray for courage right now. We pray that you would open our eyes, give us opportunities, and help us to commit with courage to the people that you are leading us uh, to speak to. May we know that the converting and the, uh, that responsibility is yours. But may we play our part, drawn into your incredible plan of renewal. May we live for you in all of these ways as authentic disciples. May it be natural. May it be easier than we, than we think it might be. May we be fruitful in your name. Lord, build us up and encourage us and bless us in these places where we go when we are church scattered and gather us in, that we may, may love one another in this place and that they will know that we are disciples of God because of the love between us. Give us courage, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Gathered. Welcome. Celebrated. Restored. Gathered together. Encouraged. Supported. Love. Reminded who God is. Hearts awed by his majesty. Eyes seeing fresh. The wonder of grace. Thankful for his awesome, unwavering love. Reminded who I am. And all I have received. Challenged, equipped, renewed, commissioned, ready, sent. Lots to, uh, to think about, challenges, encouragement. And I, I, I just, uh, as, we, as we sing our, our last uh, worship song together, please do feel free to come to the map, grab a red spot, put yourself on the map, um, whether you do that during the song or whether you do that afterwards, but just maybe take a moment just to pray as you're, making your mark on that map that Jesus would make that mark alongside you and with you and using you. Please stand if you're able.
fill us up and send us out that we could shine for you and make the world pink <laughs> and eventually red. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord, that you don't ask us to do it on our own. Thank you that you go before us and you work in us and through us. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I'd like to close with um, our usual closing prayer, which is very apt for our frontline series. Um, so if you join with me. Father God, as you lead us out onto our front lines, help us to love you, each other, and our communities. Release the gifts you've given us and invite others to meet with Jesus. Amen. Amen.